You're listening to Short Inspirations from Ralph. I can't get no satisfaction. Part 3. We've been looking at this incredible paradox where we were made and hardwired to get satisfaction. And yet when we pursue that and abandon all other pursuits, particularly searching for God, we don't find it. Remember Jesus' words, if you love your soul, you will lose it. If you lose your soul, you will gain it, so to speak. So what does losing your soul mean? What it means is looking after yourself first stops and it becomes secondary. We first of all search for and honour our God. That's as simple as I can say it. Jesus also had a simple way of saying it. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. That's all the things that we desire. Those things will be added. The psalmist in Psalm 37, 4 put it like this. Make God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life and he will provide for you what you desire the most. The psalmist also says in Psalm 20 verse 4, May he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. And so he actually wants you to have your heart's desires. But the key here is that he gives them. May he grant your heart's desires. So that's where we go. And so the soul is more satisfied when it's less self preoccupied. I'll say that again. The soul is more satisfied when it is less self preoccupied. So soul satisfaction is not about me acquiring the right things. It's about me acquiring the right soul. A soul that's not obsessed with self. In Psalm 22, the psalmist says, Deliver my precious soul from the power of the dogs. And then it says, rescue me from my enemies, my precious soul from these lions. Remember Gollum from Lord of the Rings? And actually that word Gollum comes from the Bible. It comes from a Hebrew word that's used in Psalm 139 for an unformed body. So it became in the Middle Ages a kind of character for a figure in Jewish folklore. A soulless slave that would serve its master sometimes with great resentment. That's why Tolkien chose that name, Gollum. And so in the movie, of course, Gollum was preoccupied and obsessed with the ring. And he called it his precious. But it did not satisfy him. All it did was torture his mind and then his will about what if he lost it. So Gollum is a picture of a lost soul incapable of love. Now that's a very extreme example of the effect of absolute obsession with self and things of this world outside of God. And so if I were to summarize this particular series, I would say this. The ultimate issue in the universe is not my satisfaction. It's God's satisfaction. You see, it's not about you or I. It's about him. Your soul is not your soul. It is God's soul. It has been given to you on loan. And when you die, it will come due. Our souls belong to God. They were made for God. And that's why one of Jesus' stories was about a rich man who stored up many things for himself and lived a great life. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. Wow. Again in the Psalms, the psalmist says this, Psalm 42, My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet God? with him. Jesus' whole life example was one of putting himself second and only doing the will 
of the Father. Incredible. May you today be a person who puts all your desires, your heart desires, into his hands and leave them there because he's a good God and he wants you to have the desires of your heart. God bless you.